ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video of the Art of Today we're going to be doing the part 4 of the galaxy creation. Now, we have these two galaxies that are, shall I say, go through a, well, the stars around them, what I found out was, um, when a galaxy normally has its first stars, they die very quickly, very, very quickly. But also, it's the gravitational pull from other galaxies. So, this one, when this one was first put in, it had a couple stars. The gravitational pull from this galaxy here pulled on the stars. And so, what that did was it disturbed the stars' orbits and made some of them cross. Now, there was no collisions that I know of, but there were a couple of close passes. So what that means is that supernova were quite common in this galaxy. Same with this one here. Even though it's further away, it's going to feel a slightly weaker gravitational force or tidal friction. Um, but it's the same principles go for this galaxy as well <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at this the main galaxy here and uh, we're going to try and create like a orange disc because we got a blue core ready we're going to try and make an orange disc so what I'm going to attempt to do is, uh, oh, I mean, I think you guys might find out what I'm going to try and do. Um, sorry, I'm not feeling the best today. <gasps> Excuse me, hiccups. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to. Take this object and just pull it like that. Just put loads and loads of these stars, and hopefully, after a while, we should technically get a disk of stars. Um, now. We'll just look what it looks like already. That's what it looks like already. Pretty interesting disc, actually. This is an interesting galaxy. Basically, it's very sparse here. Now, you're probably asking in the comments why there's such a big gap in between of the old stars on the outskirts and the new stars in the middle um, that's probably because there's been a, it's been through a galaxy collision or something like that but then we go to these two stars over here and they are completely intact they're in a perfect binary orbit everything's working right and then we just look at the galaxy and it's like it's got a big hole, like a big hole in, it, in its disc. And I have a feeling that we may need to fill that with, uh, my bad. we may need to fill it, fill it with, uh, um, oh my bad, with, uh, red stars. So what we can do is we're gonna carry on putting red giants in. We're gonna put a couple reasonably close. Now this could cause the entire uh system to collapse. Hopefully it doesn't. But if it does we need to be prepared 
That's a lot of stars. And it's actually starting to need to hang on, let me turn this off. Oh yeah, that should be better now. Just put a couple of markers where they need to go. So it's going to look something like that. And that is a beautiful galaxy. Absolutely outstanding. It, yes, it's got more old stars than new stars. But um, think of these as like the first stars in the universe. Okay. So these are very old uh, first generation stars and they're basically coming close to the end of their lives. Um, I'm not going to put any more in. That's what it looks like. So now what we're going to do is we are going to remove the supernovas. Delete supernova. Delete the supernova. Delete the supernova. Delete the supernova. Why are you not deleting the supernova? <laughs> delete. Delete, 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 delete. Uh, okay, it's not deleting the supernovas. Does that work? Delete. Oh, okay. But we're just gonna have to do this uh, manually. I hope that the It's still in there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Press delete again. Press delete again. Can you get rid of the supernova, please? Hang on, let me have a look. What am I doing over here? <laughs> How do I get rid of Is it particles and dust? There you go. And the lag hasn't even changed. So, uh, now what's happened now is that these two smaller galaxies, um, yes, we deleted the supernovas, but we needed to because they've been around for a little bit too long. Uh, and so, what we're going to do is we're going to press that. We're going to get. Safe, yes, please. Uh, put you would have put a couple of these objects in a sort of a um, my computer is actually starting to struggle surprisingly frames per second is only 13 uh, is there a way we can fix that that is get rid of that Does that help? A little bit. What 
to just open it up. I could just go to the settings, graphics. Low. Don't think it will, but it's kind of done it. Turn it off. Not gonna do anything. Uh, turn it off. No, nope, that does absolutely nothing. Um. performance of you. Uh, I forget. So we've got well, that's that's a big object right there. So you've got this galaxy here. The main one now has a disk of otherwise quite um, hmm, quite interesting stars, really. So I mean, of course, they're all called Factor A one, but. So you got uh, a ring of uh, first generation of stars. They got what was that? A yellow supergiant. It's almost like these two stars, these three stars, sorry, are the balls. Like almost like they've been kicked out the inner disk, and now they are like out in the void of darkness. But it'll be one hell of a time, like, the further we zoom out, the brighter that's going to become. Like, at something like this distance, that is super bright. Um, like, I don't really know how big the small magic that cloud is compared to this. It's actually pretty bloody small, actually. Got one frame per second. Uh, now we got 14, 13. So, this smaller galaxy, this is the smallest, I believe. Well, Psych's zooming away from it. Uh, zoom into the galaxy, come on. So, it's a very compact system, this is, um, only three stars, maybe to add more. Maybe 
some of these objects. That looks pretty nice actually. If we turn that off. <laughs> that actually looks really nice. Got one of the uh, first generation stars. So basically, most of these galaxies will be mostly first generation stars. Probably just a few rare second generation stars. <laughs> Our sun it hasn't even formed yet. Milky Way is probably like over there somewhere. But yeah, this is all coming to shape really. Take a couple of these yet again. Trails. So, the disc is a little bit more even, a little bit more flat than the other, but I mean the primary galaxy is uh, having a little bit of a ten temper tantrum right now. I mean it's got so many stars in it, <laughs> probably close to 200 stars. This one's like... This is more of like an orange glow now. Um, it seems to have kicked a star out. Probably the supernova kicked the star out. Yeah, it looks like it. All that star has come back in. But this will be... Um, now, the core is incredibly hot. Um, basically, I know that this is a star, but it's meant to represent, um, a black hole. Um, so, we've got all these first generation stars, as I said. The... Colonel Pelopicus Galaxy. I'm not entirely sure. No, it has a lot more uh, second generation stars. So this is a um, this is more of a new galaxy. Like this is this this galaxy is only just formed. So it's an absolute mess. That galaxy, the the Colonel Pelopicus Galaxy is a mess. The Geno Sigmorintus. The Geno the Gino Six Mornitus Galaxy is a little bit older than its uh, brother galaxy. Um, but if I am correct, 454 suns, and uh, the mass of the supermassive black hole in that galaxy is a thousand, yeah. So it's not a very large black hole, um, but it is enough to hold on to these stars here. Um, but again, still, it's not massive enough to retain um, a stable structure. So the tidal effects from the the kernel peel up from the, I uh, know, the, the Gino Sigmornitos galaxy and the Gator galaxy um, will kind of stop the uh, the Geno Pelopicus galaxy from <laughs> from forming uh, any type of Structure. So basically, this will start. This will post, most likely stay as a irregular galaxy. 
the um, if I can find it again. <laughs> My apologies. This galaxy here will probably have a set of spiral arms <laughs> because it's further out, um, and also because every time the Canopilopicus galaxy comes in between of the Gino and Gator galaxy, it will be pulled into like a a long snake-like trail. Basically, means it will be it will slowly be ripped apart every time it orbits and comes in between of the Gino and uh, Gator galaxy. Um, we may see some supernova soon in the uh, Gator galaxy because of the proximity of these first generation stars. Um, what's this? Oh yeah, this is the uh... yeah, it's that star. And then Gator A star is just massive at twenty two two hundred fifty thousand suns. It's absolutely ginormous. Dwarfs the Canopilopicus galaxy and Juno galaxy. It just dwarfs them. Um. We could put like this could be um it could be a uh, a first generation star that is slowly turning into a a a, a, a red um red super John? Yeah, red supergiant. For all we know, Beetlejuice or Betelgeuse may even be a first generation star or second generation star. <laughs> uh, we're gonna put a couple, maybe just three, um, very old generation stars, and then we're gonna put a whole bunch load of um, very young uh, first generation stars so something that looks on the plane of this so again like I said about the irregular shape it's going to look quite messy and we're losing frames very quickly so it could look something like that, but with a very large, very bloated, dying first generation star. Now you're probably like asking, like, why aren't these uh, bloated? And well, it, it's it's because they go through the second stage of the red supergiant. So this is already past the second stage. This one here. And basically what that means is that it's already bloated back up. These have to go through the second bloating stage. Um, I believe there's a... Yeah, there is. There's a... Yeah, so it's a... Red Dwarf. Don't know why Red Dwarf's in such a young galaxy, but... Okay. Um, so that actually glows blue. Um, it's actually the second brightest out of all the galaxies. Now that 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 might not sound impressive. Like, okay, it's just the second brightest, uh, second brightest galaxy in your simulator or simulation. Uh, no need to get your. Um, Wits up. If you compare the size of the galaxies, um, this is a massive galaxy right here. Massive galaxy. And then you look at this one, it's only got 
I don't know how many stars it's got. 30 stars? This has got nearly 200 stars. And this is basically the same brightness as this star, uh, this galaxy. And that will tell you something. That will seriously tell you so. This is a really, 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 really active, really bright um, blazar. Basically means um, it's like a quasar, but it's a lot more destructive than the quasar. But it can be constructive as well. So it's like right now it could be like fire in that way but the some of the material could get captured by these galaxies so it could get it could get captured it could get flung around there could even be a giant um sphere of um material around these galaxies and then this one could slowly like build up so technically this galaxy right here is helping to build its other two galaxies next to it um do, 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 do. so who is that I'm not entirely sure how big that is So what we're gonna do is we're gonna How big is Rigel? Twenty one suns. How big is uh R one three six A one? Two hundred and sixty suns in mass. So you put are you two are you one three six A one in orbit around this? The the core of this galaxy. It's gonna fuck up this galaxy. This galaxy will fall apart with a star that is so big, so dense. Um, what way is that going? It's going that way. Oh, because it's orbiting it, isn't it? But also, it's been affected by its partner, Dwarf Galaxy. So, um, so yeah, uh, we got three galaxies now that are taking shape quite nicely, actually. Um, we've got the Gator Galaxy that's still building. Um, it's now got a ring of first-generation old stars. Oh, is that Supernova? Supernova! <laughs> the Gino Galaxy is uh, still heavily active with supernovas and star birth and star death. The Crenopilopilicus Galaxy um, is basically... It's an absolute mess. It, it's an absolute mess. It's got a just a couple of old stars but most of the population of stars is new ones and uh, you can see that there's really no sparse structure here there's absolutely no sparse structure whatsoever it's just a new regular galaxy and then um, I'm gonna actually get rid of that supernova before it crashes my game and then we look at the Geno galaxy and the Juno Galaxy just got probably another 11 quadrillion tons of hydrogen, helium, and God knows what. And so that's going to make more stars, and the Juno's just going to explode in mass. The Canopilopilocus Galaxy. That's a hard name to say. Canopilopilocus Galaxy. It's kind of lagging behind, really. Even though it's closer to the parent galaxy. It's struggling to make stars. Like, it's made a couple stars, but the Juno Galaxy is really taking the crown for the biggest galaxy. Even though it's not the brightest galaxy, because it's older than its sibling, um, it's still got more galaxy, uh, more stars. It's got more mass by 
it, it's two times the size. The core of the galaxy of the Juno galaxy is two times the mass, or over two times the mass of the Crenopilopicus galaxy. Uh, and I believe that is hotter as well. Yeah, it is. Um, but the Crenopilopicus galaxy is a a blazar. So all this has to do is just get like hit by something or have an ax axial tilt or something, and the beam tilts and starts hitting the the Juno galaxy, and it will it will do two things. Either do two things. One, it completely destroys the Juno Galaxy, or two, it feeds it material. Or it can do both at the same time. It can actually blow off the material and if if it's lucky, it can form a new galaxy that could be on a an elliptical orbit or anything. But if that doesn't happen, I feel like the Juno Galaxy is gonna take hold. It's gonna get to be the more bigger, more dominant satellite galaxy, um, but not sure about the Crenopilopicus galaxy. It's it's a bit interesting, really. So, will these galaxies have life? No way, not now. They need to settle down. They are having supernovas left, right, and center. It's a dangerous place. Um, so you just cannot have life in these galaxies. You can have planets, uh, but even planets are at risk of being destroyed. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs down. Put in the comment section what you think about uh, the growth of these galaxies and the amount of supernovas they've had um, is stupid. It's 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 really really stupid. Um, the the Crenopilopicus galaxy has something like has already had five supernovas already, and then the Juno galaxy has also had five but it's just had another supernova like uh, a couple minutes ago so that puts it up to six supernova the gate or galaxy hasn't had any supernova yet but I have a feeling that this ring of stars it's not gonna go down well um, they're gonna be pulling each other they're gonna be shifting their orbits, it's going to be chaotic, it's going to turn into an absolute uh, shooting gallery of stars and supernova and planets and asteroids and moons and gas clouds. Basically, Gator A is going to turn into the messiest out of all three. So, I will see you guys in the next video. This is the Ardus Moff signing out. And also don't forget to put in the comment section what you want me to do for part 5. Bye.